Hello guys and welcome to Freebird Zoo and welcome to 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and this is day 8 and in this video we'll learn about the NLP new technique that is called word embeddings and along with word embeddings we also learn about word to vec technique and their python implementation as well. So let's get started and uh, let me introduce you to the first word embeddings. So word embeddings are the numerical representation of the textual data. Okay, we know that the numerical representation of the other data helps in analysis. We can uh, uh, easily convert any kind of uh, categorical variable to numerical variable by using the label encoding, one-hot encoding and by quantifying their certain qualities as well like uh, price, age and object. So in this kind of sentence or words data, what quality of words we want to quantify? Okay, so we want to quantify the semantics. Okay because we want to capture the context not the exact meaning of the words okay we want to know that in which context that word is used in a whole sentence okay for example if we can take a word see okay if i just say i saw a beautiful bird so that refers to the act of perceiving it with eyes but if i say i see what you mean so it signifies the understanding or agreement Okay, a good word embedding uh, would capture these meanings and allow a machine learning model to interpret the word C correctly in different different contexts as well. Okay, so now if I could say what are the like good quality word embeddings and how to generate them. So the simplest word embeddings you can have is using the one hot en encoder and building the one hot vectors. So if you have 10,000 words in your vocabulary so that you can easily represent with 1 into 10,000 vectors as well. For a simple example, if we have four words, uh, mango, strawberry, city and Delhi in our vocabulary, so that we can easily represent with the help of uh, this data frame. It shows that the one hot encoding of your these four words. Okay, so but uh, that actually creates a problem of curse of dimensionality and increase the space and time complexity as well and there is no correlation between these words that have similar meaning or the usage as well because if you say the mango orange apple these are the fruits so they should have like some kind of a similar meaning or they should have a correlation between them but with the help of one or encoding you can't uh, identify the correlation between these three words Okay, so uh, in the current situation, if we just say the mango and the orange plus mango and the city, they show no correlation as well. But in the ideal situation, if we just say the mango and the orange would be the greater similarity between the mango and the city as well. Okay, so that shows in this case. So now if we talk about... Uh, how actually the word embeddings work okay so word embeddings work by transforming your words into the numerical vectors and each dimension represents a different aspect of the meaning okay words with similar meanings have similar kind of vectors in the vector space and they are always close to each other okay so this allows machine to perform predicting the meaning of word based on its context because always the similar kind of word stays together okay so we we can easily also identify the synonyms and the related word as well if you just see this kind of a graph here it shows that there is a high correlation between king and queen man and woman and there is also a verb tense that is walking or walked and swimming or swam and in the same way we have country capital as well that also shows a high correlation or high similarity between them so we need to capture this kind of uh, context from the word that can be done by using the word embeddings okay so now if i just say uh, there are like two types of word embeddings we use the first is continuous bag of words model and second is called skip gram model okay and both are architectures to learn the underlying representation of each word by using the neural network okay we use the exact neural network to predict the uh, word vectors from their uh, numerical representation so that we can easily use to build our machine learning models or deep learning models as well 
if you just see this this is the like exact architecture of this uh, cbow and skip gram model here okay and we can explain this in our further slides first thing in cbow model the distributed re representation of context uh, or the surrounding words are combined to predict the word in the middle okay we are actually using the surrounding words to predict the middle word in cbow model but in the skip gram as well the distributed representation of word is used to predict the context because we are actually using the middle word here to actually uh, predict the words in the surroundings okay so we need to predict word embeddings of their corresponding words okay so that can be done only by using the neural networks okay so if i just uh, explain the goal of uh, skip gram model and uh, cbow model here so the goal of uh, skip gram model is it tries to predict the surrounding words by looking at the middle word only and instead of directly predicting the word from its context we make a model that increases the context by predicting the surrounding word using the middle word only and if i talk about the cbw model it tries to predict the middle word by looking at their surrounding words okay so it tries to increase the context by using their surrounding words to predict the middle word in this form okay so if we just talk about that uh, we know that uh, how it actually works now and what is the skip gram and cbw model so that is okay so now if i take a uh, sentence here i will have orange juice and eggs for breakfast and we uh, we just decide a window size of 2 okay if the target word is juice then its neighbors would be have orange and x okay these four are the neighbors so in this way we train our neural network model we try to give him the word in the window size and ask him to predict and ask him to predict that what would be the next word and based on the back propagation it tries to adjust the weights in the hidden layers and at the end we only need to use those weights as our word vectors okay so that is like complete uh, internal working of this word embeddings so if we just talk talk about the uh, architectural setup as well so the input vector represents the source word in a one hot form okay and the hidden layer as i said the earlier as well the hidden layer contain the word word vector okay that we are actually trying to learn by uh, doing the back propagation again and again okay and the output layer is like a judge that is assigning the probabilities to the word based on the learned vector as well okay so if i take an example here that word juice and their output probabilities of their surrounding words are these so this means that the juice is more similar to the word orange here okay and it is less similar to the word egg here so that is kind of a great kind of a model and great kind of a working explained that juice is more related to the orange here or and here okay and uh, if we talk about the training so we keep training the model for all the target words we have four target words and we can train on that by using the back propagation we try to calculate the errors as well for each prediction and then add them up then we adjust the weight and then we try to again train the model so in this way we try to get the best word vectors possible from the hidden layers okay so if i talk about the output probabilities so the output probabilities are going to relate to how likely it is to find each vocabulary word near our input word okay so if i give him a juice then what is the probability that it will predict the word uh, orange mango apple so that would relate to my word okay for example if i could say we trained the network with the input word soviet okay so the output probabilities are going to be much higher for the word like union or russia than for the unrelated word like watermelon or kangaroo as well so in this way uh, we can see that how our neural network is working and how it is going to predict for the next word in this case okay 
Okay, so let me just give you this Python code of uh, using the n-gram model and the CBOW model. So first we have the n-gram model. So the n-gram model will do just one work. It takes sentence as well and then split this sentence by tokenizing your word into the set of n. So we mention here n is equal to 3. So it just separate our word in a set of 3 by keeping the uh, window size same. Okay, so here we can see that this is our sentence and this sentence says that this is a sample text for anagram implementation in Python using Python. So this just uh, try to split your sentence like this. This is a sample and then is a sample and then a sample text and then sample text for. So in that way it just tries to keep the window size of 3 and try to generate new samples. So that that can be easily put in our uh, machine learning model or the deep learning model. So that is e easy to predict for the neural network that what should be the next word in this sense. Okay, if I talk about the CBOW model, so that can be done by using the Genism library here. We need to install it first and then we uh, take the, our model that is word to back model here and we also uh, import the word tokenize as well. We first to tokenize our whole sentence and then we train our CBOW model as well with the vector size and the window of file. Vector size means what kind of dimensionality that you want and along with the window size means that what is the window size that you want uh, before and uh, after your uh, word that you are trying to predict. Okay, so we just here and then we take this uh, sample and try to uh, generate for the top three words here okay so if, if you see these are the like word vectors these are the 100 word vectors okay then we generate that is 100 uh, columns here so in the same way we have these three words example a and is so these are the three words that are comes after this sample as well okay because we have sample word is there and what should comes next or after it so that shows that uh, example a and is the most kind of uh, uh, probabilities given to example so that's also make a uh, sense as well we can also see that sample example sample example in this way so that makes sense in some way okay but we train this uh, kind of a model as well with large kind of corpus our results are more refined as well okay so now you see that how these uh, anagram and CBOW model is implemented in the Python. Now let's talk about the problems with this CBOW and Scriptgram uh, models. So the issue is sparse weight updates. Okay. So the issue is that for each training sample, only the weights corresponding to that target word may receive a synchronous update during back propagation. Okay, rest all the words that you use as your vocabulary do not change weights because they are not even used in that. Okay, so if we can say that in the traditional neural network, we aim to update all the weights in the middle layer by using the back propagation. However, with CBW or Scriptgram model, non target words, weights might get marginal or no updates at all. So this is the like first problem. And second problem is expensive softmax uh, calculation so the calculation of final probabilities using the softmax function is computationally expensive okay for every training sample the softmax operation involve summing off of scores of all the words in the vo vocabulary whether we use those words or we don't use those words so that's also a very expensive operation so to overcome these two problems instead of using brute force way we might come with the new way that is called negative sampling. Okay, the negative sampling allows us not only to modify a small percentage of weight, rather than all of them for each training sample. We do this by slightly modifying our problem. Okay, so instead of trying to predict the pro uh, probability of a word by word for all the words in the vocabulary, we try to predict that our training sample words are neighbors or not. Okay, we make this problem uh, from the uh, multi-class problem to the binary classification problem only. Okay, so referring to our previous example, 
of orange and juice we don't try to predict the uh, probability for the juice to be nearby word of the juice or orange we try to predict whether juice and orange are the nearby words or not okay that's the thing and uh, we will learn in depth about this negative sampling and uh, their python code and math as well in our next video so just be with it and if you want to learn more about uh, uh, prompt generating, data science and machine learning and you can watch my videos on YouTube and also read my blogs. We'll meet in our next video for sure. Thank guys. Thank you so much.